Hello and welcome to the Lagos Network Center. The program is Panorama. Today, we discuss a skin disorder becoming more noticeable amongst Nigerians. What is the skin disorder? Is it a disease? Is it contagious? Is it hereditary? Can it be prevented? Or is it fatal? These are the burning questions that we will provide answers to. Vitiligo is a chronic skin disorder which causes white patches of skin to appear on different parts of the body. It can sometimes be mistaken for the aftermath of hot water burn. What really is vitiligo? Is it contractible? To shed more light on this skin disorder, are the executive director of the Vitiligo Support and Awareness Foundation, Ogo Madrewesi. Ogo, you're welcome to the program. Thank you. And uh, we also have Chris Opara, a member of the foundation. Thanks, thank you for being a part of the program. Thank you very you're much. welcome. My pleasure. My first question will be directed at Ogo. Mm -hmm. What kind of skin disorder is vitiligo? Um, vitiligo is um, what kind do I call it now? Is um, I give you a layman definition: is um, a condition whereby you wake up one morning and you're losing your skin color out of the blue. And that is what you have. That yeah. is what I have. Yeah. I didn't have it until uh, February 2005 when I woke up and um, saw a dot hair, yeah. and then um, that was it. It's, it happens to be a very fu funny one around here, you know, because um, th there's so many theories to it. It could be this, it could be that, it could be. It could be because of what you're eating, like Yorubas believe. You must have taken something your family doesn't eat. You know, like um, the Eastern believe that somebody must have done it to you so that maybe you can get married or something <laughs> to stop you from achieving some things. Yeah. And like you said, you know, some people think it's hot water. And then um, the other hand, they feel it's spiritual. You know, it might be nemesis or a cause. You know, so it's a, it's a very, I, I don't want to say controversial, but it's, it's something that has been misunderstood over time. So, yeah. but medically, what, what is it supposed to be? Okay, medically, is, um, uh, it was until April last year that um, research <coughs> confirms it to be an autoimmune disorder. An autoimmune disorder is when the immune that is supposed to ward off diseases starts seeing itself as antibody, you know, starts seeing itself as an enemy and starts attacking it. And these are caused by free, uh, free radicals. It's so, a mystery, I would say, to the medical community because to date, no cure has been found as a no uniform effective therapy mm. yet. Yes. Uh, does it have any relationship with eczema? Not at all. No, no not at all. You know, you don't have any melanin anymore. Not that it can be produced. Sometimes people tell you that you, your melanin has been destroyed. But it's not only really true. It can still be uh, produced, mm. you know. That uh, there is no cure for it yet. Will it just continue to spread? You'll just watch it spread <laughs> like that. Okay, um, there's no cure for it, but that doesn't mean it can't manage. You know, like I said, there is no uniform effective therapy. Mine used to be far more than this. I used to have it, you know, all here. It was yeah. much more my face. Yeah. So you can actually manage. And um, the management for me has been some natural therapies. Because um, I was given an injection that almost crippled me. And so mm -hmm. the fear of the injection became the, you know. So I started looking for other means. There must be something. I wasn't born with it. I didn't have it in 2005. And it just tired. So there must be a way. There must be something I would do. You know that uh, will help me get my skin color back. So people are trying different things. There are clinically there are immunomodulators. You know, there are so many things people are trying out. So until you try one, like I encourage people, why don't you go on for at least three to six months? If it's not working, then move on to another thing. Mm -hmm. You know, but somehow people want it to be, you know, um, something that will just happen overnight. You know, so there are certain things that help. There are certain um, certain foods because I go very natural managing my own vitiligo, a certain food, a certain um, vitamins that helps. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Now, Chris, uh, can vitiligo be classified as a disease? Yes and no. Yes, because uh, anything that deviates from the normal in the human body is a disease. So it's classified as a mm. disease. But not a death-causing disease, sort of. Yes, it is a disease in medical terms. Okay. Have you found out... Um, at all, uh, what uh, the cause of the skin disorder is? Like Ogo has mentioned, is the loss of the capacity of the melanin producing agents under the cortisol. Yeah. It's dropped, it's no longer producing enough reagents to repigment because repigmentation is a continuous process. Anywhere it fails, the skin changes color. It's as simple as that. It's what they call hypo. Uh, pigmentation. pigmentation. Mm. There are two forms of pigmentation, hyper and hypo. Yeah, when hyper. a white person becomes whiter, it is hyper. When a black person becomes 
white it is hypo mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. two different things yeah, yeah. hypo can still be like um, when i get my skin color back it gets darker yeah, it than it also me. get darker and darker and all then the it time. fits back to my normal skin color yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh god does it have any symptom no no not at all you have it like you have the like you see the white dots and what is that knows you have the condition because you don't experience any heat no, you don't, don't experience that yeah and, and um, is it hereditary, Chris? Yes. Um, if I cast my mind back, I was told that my grandfather had it just the way I have it now. Oh. But I don't believe it. But, you know, he stands to reason. My uncle had it on his legs, but mine is more pronounced. And this has taken how many years? 1982 to now. 29 years. Yeah, and... I'm almost white completely. I wish these ones would go away. <laughs> okay. And uh, what has been your... Okay, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I wanted to add something to, the, to yeah. it being a hereditary or genetic. Yeah, yeah research says that 30% of it is. So I've seen quite cases, quite um, so many cases, you know. I remember when, I, when my started, I was asked, is anybody in your family living with it? I said, no, I, I can't think of anybody. But later, I remember that one of my mom's cousins is living with it. Again, it could be the forefathers. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I think it jumps a generation, you know. Again, it could be. I, I've, I've seen cases I know of a woman whose four kids has got it. I know somebody, three of them in their family, they are living with it. You know, so it could be genetic. Uh, research is 30%. Sometimes I feel it might be more than 30% because of the cases I've seen. Yeah. Yes, and uh, what has been your personal experiences with people, you know, well, in your I relationship with people? Yeah, this is the actual reason I'm here. Mm -hmm. There's so much lack of understanding of the condition. Uh, initially, when it started from my fingertips, some women will not collect money, receive money from me in the market, and I will just laugh at them. People have to know that, one, I know you're going to ask the question, this is not contagious. Mm. It is limited to me as Chris or Para, or maybe my grandchildren. None of my children has it. Maybe somebody will develop it in the family down the line. It is not contagious. It does not stop anything. In fact, the listening public, the viewers should know that I pride my patches because when you see me, you cannot but look at me. When I speak to you, mm. you listen because you are captured by what I look like. Yeah. <laughs> it is my badge. It's my personal badge. And I'm proud of it. I would like to return back to the dark skin. But if God, who is the almighty creator and the one who gave me the complexion in the first instance, has decided to remodel me who am i so i just appeal to the public it is not contagious it's not transferable i woke up one day and found it mm -hmm. i would like to return and to it that can happen to anybody. it can happen to anyone anytime yeah. Yeah. anywhere any place i know the former chairman I, I don't know whether he's still around the chairman of um the people that built uh vgc what's his name what's their name uh that Does big company fair? Now, the big company that built VGC, mm -hmm. their chairman had it. He HFP. went to Cuba, HFP. He went to Cuba for treatment, and when he came back, it was still the same. <laughs> this is nature. Nature reorganizes, and like Ogo has mentioned, I am starting to manage it, to take the natural things they've recommended. Yes, I was going to uh, talk about yeah. that. You know, Ogo said she has her own way of managing it, and yeah. different ways. Yeah. Can you yeah. tell us the way you have been managing well, it? Well, the books have recommended vitamin B12 and folic acid. And uh, we are experimenting with a uh, yaro and carrot, you know, blended together. I found a few patches coming back on my skin, but I've just started. I met Ogo only a little while back. Was it in February? Mm. January or February, yeah. by accident. And I joined them. So I am an eaglet as far as uh, managing this uh, uh, pigmentation loss is concerned. But I believe that what will be will be. If God wants me to turn back, the way he started it one morning, mm. I will turn back. But yeah. I want to tell Nigerians, Farabale, there's nothing wrong with <laughs> us. We've only lost the top of the skin. What is underneath is still the it's same. Still there. I am an engineer by profession. I carry out my work. I think clearly. The only thing that affects me is that I am reacting to it's sunshine, so sunlight now. Oh, yeah. When it is very hot, I feel pepper. But besides that, there's nothing more. No itch, yeah. no scratch. Yes, talking about management, Ogo, how long does it take for the skin to start coming back? Coming back to... Okay, um, I think it, it actually depends on, um, on, on, 
on individual. Mm -hmm. You know, we have um, the way we react to things, they are quite different. Like you mentioned, vitamin B12. Um, research has says that people with vitiligo we do not absorb vitamin B12 very well. So um, it, it's, um, it's advised that we take at, at least 2,000 mcg daily, the folic acid and the pantothenic acid, which is vitamin B5, as well as vitamin C. Like you mentioned, the goyero. The goyero is helping us a lot here. The goyero is a miracle tree. It's a wonderful tree, mm -hmm. I, I tell you. So there's so many ways you can use it. You can do the oil. There's the goyero oil. You know, those are the things we're trying to put in place to have locally available here, but it's well up there in the north. And you can chew the leaves. You don't need to buy it. Anyway, I see you go here, I stop and, and I drink it. Oh, oh, no, no, no. When it comes to bitter, no, those are beautiful juice for us now. <laughs> see, that's bitter things anymore. Anyway, I see bitter like I stop and I plug. And people are like, are you, anyway, I see the go here, I mean, are you a herbalist? I say yes. You know, <laughs> I've gone to the stage where something that doesn't bother me anymore, that I'm taking something that helps me. So you can go on the go here, leaves. It helps a lot. You can juice it, you can chew the leaves. I like chewing the leaves because it helps my teeth too, you know. It helps for toothache and all. So, and outside that, like you mentioned, uh, carrot. Carrot contains beta carotene. Uh, carotene. These are the things that help us. Uh, that green vegetables, they are rich in phytochemicals. These are the things that help to build the, you know, the antioxidants we need to fight the free radicals, you know. So, putting all these things in place and uh, doing it as in consistently, because the problem we have is that we don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Two weeks ago, it's not working. And then, um, you know, when we lose our skin color, it starts with a dot and it progresses. That's how you get your skin color back. Like if you look at my face, you see a dot. Mm. You know, the dots are the things that grows. It starts, it, it continues to expand and start to blend, you know. Up here before, it was completely white, but it was um, towards the end of life that I started dot, dot, and it's coming back together. Mm. Under my eyes, I started like two months ago. You know, it's coming back together. Yes, and then, um, um, yes, that, that's how it blends back together. So if you, have, if you start managing and you see a dot, you should go for Thanksgiving because they actually have to <laughs> But can it be prevented? No, no, no. If it can be prevented, I will know mm. it's like, yeah. you know, there, there's nothing that tells you that this thing is coming. It's, 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 you just notice it and it's there. Some people believe it's a form of leprosy. Is it true? Yes, you know, in India, the, the, uh, white leprosy is common. And if you check the Bible, Leviticus th chapter 13 and chapter 14, mm -hmm. a lot was talked about about vitiligo there, about um, white patches, white. you know. So people mistake it when they read this thing, but, and then vitiligo wasn't mentioned there at all. They talked about leprosy, leprosy, leprosy. But um, we don't have white leprosy. And I've not even seen it in Nigeria. It may be there. I've not seen it in Nigeria. We have the other form of leprosy that, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, that affects the whatever. So because of that, some people, it's a very serious issue in India. You know, people mistake it to be um, leprosy, but vitiligo is not leprosy, I'm telling you. This is, um, mm. not that there are people with leprosy that they are, but this is not leprosy. It's not contagious. And so Chris, does the condition affect your ability to perform tasks? No. No. <laughs> it has no effect at all. It's just that my face looks different. That's all. <laughs> and does it make you invalid? Oh, no. Like I just mentioned, this even a passport. Yeah. When I, when I talk to audiences, they just look. They don't, if I am speaking to people, they do not make noise. They cannot lose focus. Because they are looking at this enigma standing there. And that is one of those uh, things we have gained. No. I perform as, normally okay. as before. Yeah. Okay, what do you do to that? This is Engineer Chris. He has gotten to this. This, he has gone to this level. This is all good. I have I've been able to conquer this, but yeah. a whole lot of people are still going through um, a, a lot. People can't get job, you know, because nobody wants, um, wants um, yeah. you know, something like that in yeah. the office. People can't get job. People are still finding it very difficult the, 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 because of the comments, because of the, the, you know, the stigma is something else. The stigma is something else. So people are still trying yeah. to come to terms with it. And it's not an overnight and this is what we're working yeah, on. Your know, foundation is uh, creating awareness on vitiligo. Yes. Yeah. How is it doing it and what is the impact? Okay. Um, the awareness has been wonderful out there and then I have to thank NTA first for that because, mm -hmm. I mean, you guys have been wonderful. I remember we had our inaugural launch, NTA was there to cover it. It was on Newsline and our TV pillars. It's been on NTA. It's been, it's been showing. We've done a documentary which is on air. We've done our TV pillars, five different ones which is on air. NTA is playing it. TVC yeah. is playing it. It's online. It's on YouTube. You know, we're doing so much with social media too. Facebook, yeah. Twitter and all and LinkedIn. And then like 25th of June, we had our Vitiligo Awareness Day and um, it's been wonderful because people keep saying, wow, I never knew, how oh, I never knew. So people are getting to know, people are beginning, they're beginning to accept people with Vitiligo yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. I've been talking to the Executive Director of the Vitiligo Support and Awareness Foundation, Ogo Madre Wese, and a member of the Foundation, Chris Opara. I want to thank you for coming on the thank program. Thank you very much. Thank you.